Howdy folks, Super Koopa here, and this is another Koopa commentary. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about Nintendo in 2020. It's currently January 30th, and so far there has not been a Nintendo Direct, at least not a mainline one. There was a Pokemon one just a couple of weeks ago, and then before that, towards the end of 2019, there was a Indie World presentation, but so far there hasn't been any solid Directs that have focused on multiple games. And there's all sorts of rumors flying around, all sorts of ideas as to what the future could bring aside from what we already know which is let's be honest basically just animal crossing so people are very curious as to what this year is going to bring and subsequently what next year is going to bring if they announce some of next year's game in the next direct although i'm not sure if they will or not but that's all just speculation on my part same as really anybody else the interesting thing for me will be seeing how many first-party titles are launched this year. Usually, from what I've seen with Nintendo's track record, it's about three or four from Nintendo's own studios, and then who knows how many from other studios that they basically subcontract to. It'll just be interesting to see if we get a new Mario, if we get a new Paper Mario. There's rumors flying all over the place about several different franchises that have sort of been collecting dust coming back and there always seems to be but Nintendo never really seems to reach into their back drawer so to speak to try and bring those franchises back even though there is a demand for them at least in the West they seem to be focused on uh, what is profitable and what they know can bring in the big bucks and on the side of mobile things that they can monetize but I don't think that, honestly, that's really a good focus. I don't think that's a good stance to have for the company. Even though, yes, you want to make profits, at the end of the day, the mobile market is not the place you want to invest in. And, uh, I don't know, but Animal Crossing is going to see a big surge in sales, for sure. It's going to make March a really good month for the company. And... Who knows, maybe they'll launch a Direct in February and we'll have some stuff to look forward to f further. But I'm thinking that the smart thing for them to do would be in February have a main Direct and then in March just before they release Animal Crossing have a maybe like 45 minute Direct talking about the things that you can do in New Horizons. And I've got concerns about Animal Crossing New Horizons, I really do. I'm just not going to dwell on them too much because I don't know if any of them will really come to fruition or if it's just my sort of worrying. In the modern gaming landscape, it's so easy to be worried about the future and to really just not know what's going to happen. And you end up just kind of feeling a little anxious about dropping $60 on a game because you don't know, even if it's from somebody as good as Nintendo and a game as good as Animal Crossing, you just don't know what they're going to do with it. You know, it looks mostly the same from what we've seen from the footage from E3 of last year. But there's still a lot of concerns that I have personally. I'm sure many others have talked about in their own videos and in other outlets. But I just, I don't know. I've got reservations, but I'm still going to get it. I still think it's going to be an overall good game. It's going to be day one purchase for me for sure. I love this series. and But I'm more interested to see as well what Nintendo is planning for the rest of the year because if they are doing three major first party releases then this is the first of three so it'll be interesting to see what the other two are and if they do more than that you know there's a lot of franchises that Nintendo can really bring back that I think would be perfect for the Switch the Mario sports games I've said in the past that I am a huge Mario sports fan not the sports mix in particular but the individual games done by Camelot I really think that they need to bring back uh, Mario Golf, Mario Strikers. That's not a Camelot game, but it's next level. And both of those games, Strikers and Strikers Charge, were really good. I believe they were called Mario Strikers Football and Mario Strikers Football Charge in Europe. But in America, they were just Strikers, so that's basically what I'm talking about. And people have wanted sequels to those games for years because the gameplay was so fantastic. And it was so ripe for online play. Yeah, I personally like the first Strikers over 
the sequel, Charge. Charge is good, but I, I just don't like the goalie minigame. I don't know, that kind of threw me off, but it's still fantastic to play. And so, I play it quite a bit when I can. That is when I'm not recording Let's Plays, playing something else. But, there's also Battalion Wars, which is a uh, Kuju series. I always thought that that was Nintendo's in-house studio, but I never realized it was Kuju, the same ones who are doing Advance Wars. And I would really like to see them bring that back, but that's up to Nintendo reaching out to them and saying we want another one, and if they would do it. A lot of people have talked about bringing back Golden Sun, and I think there have been some rumors floating around about a new Golden Sun, but I can't confirm that. I'm just going on what I thought I heard, so I'm not entirely sure what the case is there. Uh, there's rumors about more Earthbound stuff in development, which there always seems to be. At least from what I've heard. The game that was supposed to be Earthbound for the fan project already got a trailer. And that looks pretty good. Although it's not officially Mother 4. So, yeah. We'll see where that goes. I mean, there's just so many things. I mean, we got a 2D Zelda last year. Some people are really banking on Breath of the Wild 2 being announced this year. But I just... It's so early to announce anything. The only thing they were able to announce was that it was in development. You know, same as Metroid Prime 4, and we all know that that had to restart development, and so it's going to be a while before we hear about that. A lot of people want a Metroid Prime trilogy before they release 4, so that way they can play it on their Switch, and I think that's a good idea. But I also think that uh, it needs to be decently priced. You know, because they already did the trilogy on Wii, and subsequently digitally on Wii U. So, and also it'll be interesting to see what they do with the Wii U and the Wii U shop, because it's pretty much dead, even though there's still a lot of games on there that I want to purchase, but it'll be interesting to see what they end up carrying over to the Switch, and if they do anything different with the Switch UI, because... The Switch UI, in my opinion, is not very good, and I know that's a sentiment that a lot of people have... But it would be interesting to see them, you know, offer things like My Nintendo themes like they did with the 3DS. And I know this stuff takes time, but the Switch has been out for, what, two years now? Three years, almost? And, you know, it, it needs... It really, really needs a solid... UI. I almost forgot what I was going to say there. Man, I had a brain fart. I apologize, but it needs a UI upgrade. It needs something that is more colorful instead of just being able to choose black or white and just have these random tiles, which you really can't organize in any coherent way, and it's really frustrating. It's not a deal breaker for me. I mean, the Switch is still one of my favorite consoles of all time now because of how good it's done and how good it's been to play, but... You know, there is definitely a need for a UI change or upgrade of some sort. And then there's been rumors floating around about a more powerful Switch, which there were rumors floating around about that last year and the year before that, and that'll be interesting to see if they actually do anything, but, I mean, who knows? I wouldn't be surprised if they launch a different console altogether and say, here's, here's our family of consoles the Switch, Switch Lite, and whatever the new console is. So, it wouldn't surprise me, but I think it's still too early to decide the Switch's lifestyle for that, but... Whatever. Whatever. But most of what's out there are rumors, and I don't really want to comment too deeply on those, because I don't know what's true and what's not, as most people don't. Rumors and leaks, and there seems to be a hostility towards rumors and leakers, and... But I think you have to understand, one of the reasons that people pay attention to these things so much is because Nintendo keeps so tight-lipped, and when they do reveal stuff in a direct, people get hyped over rumors and then they get disappointed because there's so much that they could do, but they won't do. So, if Nintendo was a little bit more transparent, I think that we wouldn't have this problem of leakers, especially with the Smash Brothers stuff, you know, if they were more consistent on updates. You know, so... Which, by the way, there was that Smash Direct for Baylith, which people went nuts over. I actually uninstalled Super Smash Bros. Ultimate from my Switch. I wasn't enjoying it. 
you know, I tried, I tried my best to really enjoy it, but honestly, I feel like I haven't enjoyed a Smash Brothers game since Melee and Pasa or Brawl. And even then, I think the original is still my all-time favorite in terms of how it feels to play. The newer games just feel... Nah. Once you get past Melee, it's hit or miss. I think Brawl was the last one to me that felt decent. But... I mean, Melee is definitely a fan favorite for many, and especially many who play competitively, which I could care less about, but... I think the problem with Smash Brothers is that everybody wants their favorite character in it because it's a crossover fighter, and that's not really realistically feasible with licensing. So, yeah, I understand that, and most of the hype goes to the characters. I got so sick of each passing direct being, "Well, oh, what's the next Smash fighter? What's the next Smash fighter? It's like, people are here for things other than Smash Brothers, you know? They've got a lineup of games. You know, people are even talking about Splatoon 3. Which is possible, but it seems a little soon for it. Unless they started development directly after 2, which is possible. And even then, I'm not sure what they could really do, story-wise. Because 2 feels like... It feels like the story of 1, but told slightly different. So it's kind of copy-paste, and then there's the Octo expansion, which I still haven't completely finished 100%. I finished enough to get an Octoling, but that's about it. And, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. There's so much stuff that's in the works, so much we don't know about, so much that people want. It just kind of feels overwhelming. But I think we just need to be patient and see what the Direct brings. And then I'll be sure to react to whatever is said. Not a live reaction, but I'm just going to talk point by point about it in a another Koopa commentary, so, but I think the future is bright for Nintendo, I think there's so many places that they could go, and hopefully they're considering all their options, and they're, they're really doing what they said, and taking in feedback of what people want, because I guess somebody said that at some point, I think it's somebody with Nintendo of America, so I think if they, if they really advocate for what we want here in the West, I think we'll start to see more of what we want, because the Switch is so profitable, but that's not a guarantee that we're going to get every single title that we want because there's some stuff that Nintendo is just not going to go out of their way to develop just because there's a vocal minority of people that want it. Like, I still say the people who want more Earthbound are a vocal minority because when they released the original Earthbound on the Wii U and the 3DS and the SNES Classic Edition, I don't think it did tremendously, tremendously well. You know, it's it's still not a major talk to... I mean, it's a talked-about game when it's relevant to talk about, but it's almost a meme how people talk about, uh, bring over Mother 3. It's like, yeah, in theory, it would be easy for them to do, but would it even be w profitable to do? Like, would it, would it even turn a profit? You know, would it be worth all that translation work and you know, all that stuff, and reconfiguring controls for the Switch, or whatever console it ends up being on, you know? That stuff takes time and resources, and it has to be worth it for Nintendo to turn a profit, you know? So, who knows what they'll do? Who knows? Who knows what the future will bring? They seem to be focused on mobile, which is scaring a lot of people, including myself, because, like I said before, I don't really think that that's a smart move on their part. Because mobile gaming is really just kind of scummy and half-baked. There are only a handful of good mobile games, and they're, you know, few and far between, and decently priced. But Nintendo seems to be going down the route of EA and some of these other companies with their mobile games, and it's not... It's not looking too good. I will say that Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is probably the only decent one that they have that's worth checking out for me personally, but Mario Kart Tour was kind of dumb, and Super Mario Run was okay for about five minutes and then just kind of fell off the wayside. Pokemon Masters, I uninstalled it after 15 minutes. Just didn't keep my attention. Just felt very watered down and odd. Not the Pokemon experience I'm used to, so. 
I mean, they haven't had a whole lot of success with anything outside of Pokemon Go, and even then, that's really more Niantic and Pokemon Company than Nintendo directly, but... Anyways, we'll see what the future brings, but the point of this video is to say I think Nintendo's future is bright, and I think we just have to be patient and optimistic about whatever it brings, and not just demanding what we think should be on the console. We all have opinions on what we think should be on the Switch, but ultimately, we have to just see what Nintendo gives us, and go from there so i guess that's all i got thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you next time this has been super koopa with another koopa commentary i'll see you in the next one god bless have a good one peace